Thanks for stopping by, Cowboy Leather and Shoe Repair. Howdy. I'm Scott from Cowboy Leather and Shoe Repair. Today we're going to do a little tooling. I've been working on uh, some cowboy cuffs. I've got that far. I'm going to go ahead and do a little more tooling here. Probably tool around the, uh, the steer head. These are pretty much finished except for just a little bit of tooling here and there. So, let me put, tilt the camera down and let's do some tooling. Hang on. Get a little rough here. There we go. Alright. So, we're going to do a little tooling like I say. And we're using a, a 490, excuse me, 4, 422. Now, like I said, I've already uh, got a little bit of this going. This is just a simple, simple project. You can tool these any way you want. It's all your preference. There, I don't believe there's a right way or wrong way. Just use your imagination, I guess. make that a little darker. There we go. Now, we, you can do a couple things. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Use a craft tool. Oh, I don't know. I can't. They make these things too small. Anyway, let me use a beveler. Nope, I'm not. I decided I'm not. So I'm going to take. You know, would have if I put my glasses on, I might be able to see where I'm going. And be able to tell you what what we're using. Haha, <laughs> look at that. There we go. S722. I'm gonna come in here. Just above that. Wrong hammer. There we go. Let's hit the other one. Do the same thing. Now I got a bigger piece piece of this that 
I like using the small one. And also, if you're going to do any amount of tooling, I suggest putting some green painter's tape across the back of here because as you're tooling on this, it's stretching the leather. But I'm not doing that, that much tooling on it, so I decided I wasn't going to put it on there. Plus, I'm out of it. I don't do much tooling. Things I make usually don't don't require tooling. But every once in a while, I do it. Yep. There we go, rodeo fans. Now I can take and put basket weave up in here, but I think I'm gonna just leave it the way it is. And, you know, call it a day. You, you know, sometimes less is more. Now what kind of leather have I used? This is oil tan. This is actually bed stand soaked heavy with oil, and I bought it uh, in that brown because I I find it's one step that I don't have to do, and you know it's all even. If I were to cut this, you'll find that the oil and and the dyes pretty much soaked all the way through. I didn't dye this. This came from the manufacturer from tannery like this. Now there's not not a whole lot of anything else you can do. I mean, like I said, you could if you were making something like this, you could go ahead and basket weave. You can put uh, you can leave this this off and you can put a floral tooling pattern on there whatever makes you happy you know these are not for a customer these are just basically for uh, uh, store stock but you know it's up to you somebody you know you probably say well you know who's gonna buy those I'll list them uh, on one of the uh, websites, I usually list stuff on eBay or wherever, and hey, I've sold stuff with just just a pattern like this in the middle of it. You don't have to, you know, get all fancy. Now all you do here is you just lace some. Uh, I get it, got an overabundance of this. You lace this up. This is an adult male size. And ah, so some people you can take and put a strap across here, buckle here and there, so you can just put it on and buckle them up. 
some people take put a snap here, male and female, so it locks. But I don't, unless the customer asks for it. Now I got big wrists, so you can lace that up if you want, tie it there, or sometimes what I'll do is I'll take and I'll cut this cut this round right here and just take them off I'm not sure how I'm going to make the closure I'll probably use uh, saddle strings on it but that's just a little bit of tooling show you how to done give you some ideas anything you do is up to you you're the maker, so, you know, if you want to go whole hog and, you know, trick this all out with uh, tooling, that's your business. Now, something that I've seen is, I watched a uh, video here the other day, and somebody was taking their metal, uh, they were laying out stitching holes. And they were taking, using this to drive their, their uh, stitching fork whip onto. And they stopped and they went, oh, it's bending. Well, number one, it was a Chinese tool, came from candy, I guess. But you don't poke holes on here for stitching this is granite, and you'll tear up your, your stitching tools. The only thing I do is I, I tool my other granite, I tool on it. I don't set rivets. I've got, uh, oh, I haven't got one here, but I got a piece of metal, a piece of uh, quarter inch thick metal. It's probably about the same size as this. That's what I set my copper rivets with, my bang rivets, and all my rivets. I set it on the metal. You got to go some to tear up uh, your metal. So. Let me bring you back up. Turn you around here. Take off my glasses so I can see. Glasses for reading, not for reading or up close work. But like I say, you know, tooling takes time, takes a little bit of practice. Every once in a while, when I get bored or something like that, I'll sit down with a piece of bet, uh, tore up leather, a piece and that I can't use for nothing, and I just practice with it. You know, I concentrate on my edges, on everything I make. I made this inside the waistband holster for a customer. That's for a, uh, I think it's a Glock, can't remember what it is, bad guy bopper can't call them what they really are but anyways inside the waistband and I take I take uh, and concentrate on my on my edges and stuff like that I don't worry about my tooling if you're gonna make stuff make sure you're you know I, I suggest to people Work on your stitch lines. If you're going to hand stitch, take a groover, groove it out. Take your pricking irons, go down through and, and prick your holes where they're going to be. Make sure everything is straight. Edges. You know, I, I like my edges to be as smooth as possible. You know, some people or OCD, you know, they got to have them edges just 
oh so perfect and oh so shiny. That's that's a good that's a good way to do it. But you can't spend a lot of time. Get your edges as close as possible. Finish them with your wax, your glycerin, whatever you use to slick your edges up, and get on. You know, a high gloss finish is great if it's something that people are going to, you know, be picking up and seeing. But if you're making a holster, a slick edge is good, especially on the top where, where it goes in and out. You know, concentrate on concentrate on stuff like that. You know, practice, practice, practice. You, the more you practice, the more you do, the better you get, the better your work's going to look, and you can command a higher, uh, higher price. You know, if I got something that looks kind of shady, I don't feel that I can charge, you know, what? A slick what one that's you know the edges are slick and stuff like that and I had an old guy one time tell me the better it looks the better price it's gonna bring you know if I used to deal in uh, go to horse sales a horse that looks slick there's no fly bites not a hair out of place brings more money than a ragtag looking horse that hasn't had a bath and looks all scruffy. But we're not talking horses here, we're talking leather goods. So, you know, I can't stress enough. Work on your edges, make sure your stitch lines are good, and the rest will come, come uh, natural. Don't abuse your tools, you know, use the proper tool for the proper job. You know, I I even use this. That's a rubber head on there and that's a fiberglass head on there. Now I use that on uh, if I'm poke, punching holes I use that. If I'm tooling I use this. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I've got one of them cheap Poly hammers that I got from, uh, I believe it was Tandy years and years ago. It lays back, <clears throat> excuse me, lays back in the toolbox. I don't use it much. I'll use it once in a while. If there's a wasp or hornet lands on my table, I'll whack it with that, but I don't use it much. So, I think that's pretty much this video for today I just you know felt like it was something that I just wanted to show people I'm not a big tooler I don't you know there's people out there that they can make some beautiful looking tooling out of leather I don't have the patience it's I mean I've, hey, I've done some pretty good stuff I tooled a horse head on a purse one time. Uh, I did a uh, floral oak leaves, and uh, I think there were some rose rosebuds and whatnot in it. Turned out really nice. But like I say, yeah, I don't have the time, and sometimes people don't want to pay for craftsmanship. They'd rather go to the store and buy some piece of Taiwan or Chinese junk and it tears up. I mean, there's probably people out there that, you know, know what I'm talking about. You know, some of the tools we get, you know, if you look at all your tools, a lot of them will say, say China on it. And, oh, there's something else. I've run across a lot of uh, people on different uh, leather craft forums and whatnot looking for tools. 
you know, they want to start. And I think with, for the two years that uh, everybody was locked in their houses, people went out and they bought tools and they bought leather working equipment and leather and the whole nine yards. And now, you know, we're allowed to go outside, but you can't go nowhere because price of fuel is up like everything else. So now I'm seeing a lot of people are getting and listing their tools. So my suggestion is if you're wanting to get into this or if you want to upgrade, check out some of these. Uh, there's a, I think it's on Facebook. It's called uh, something uh, Beginner's Leather or Leather Crafter Be Beginners or something like that. There's uh, holster making. If just go on there and just start typing uh, different things pertaining to leather in a search engine and see what pops up. And there's a page on there if you're looking for clicker dies. There's one people swap selling trade clicker dies. Clicker presses. Uh, there's one on there sewing machines, industrial, uh, flatbeds. If you're looking for to upgrade, check check out some of these different uh, leather crafting websites and see what you can pick up there. You know, I don't like to uh, you know capitalize on somebody else's misfortune or whatever, but. Some of the people are giving away stuff that I know what they paid for it and what they're asking and what they're getting for it. They're pretty much giving it away. And you know, you get you get these people on there that you know somebody will chime in and say, "Hey, I I want to get into a uh, uh, cylinder arm sewing machine." Well, first thing they do. That somebody in there will go. Well, get a Cobra, get, uh, whatever the 26, the 24, whatever Cobra's got. Or, you know, somebody will say, Well, I don't want to spend a lot of money. And they jump in there and they say, Well, get one of them Tipman bosses. Well, Tipman boss is a hand jerky pushy, jerky pushy. They sell them at Tandy. You can, myself, I had a crank machine way back when. It served its purpose. Now I've got a uh, Ferdinand the Bull. But if you look, sometime just for the heck of it, look up uh, Cobra machines. Look at Ferdinand. I think it's uh, Fern, yeah, Fernco now. But look at the different machines out there. Uh, the Cowboy uh, 4500 Stitcher. Look at them. They're all pretty much the same machine. Just different name and different colors. So anybody that tells you that the Cobra is the better machine... It might be. It might it might come with more accessories than some of these other ones. But remember, you can only get what your pocketbook will allow you to. I know a guy, uh, he deals in the uh, Fernco machines. Well, he's got a deal where... Uh, Burn Co., and I can't remember what his distributor is. You can buy on a uh, payment plan. So, if you get, if you want to do that, hey, 
but if you're going to do it, make sure you got a little bit of money coming in. And make sure, you know, that this is, leather crafting is what you want to do. You know, don't go out and buy all this fancy stuff and then come wintertime go, oh, this isn't for me because now you're spending a lot of money and you may take a loss. So I'm not trying to be a crepe hanger. I'm just trying to tell you, if you're looking for to upgrade some of your equipment, sewing machines, skivers, whatever you want to try and do, look around before you go and uh, buy brand spanking new. You know, if you want hand tools, check out some of these places. Check out eBay. You know, because a lot of people have gotten the uh, C.S. Osborne. Now, C.S. Osborne's good stuff. You're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, you're going to pay a little extra, but you'll have it for a long, long time. I've got C.S. Osborne stuff, some, and it's older than dirt. I've got one, uh, I see if I can see it right here. And I don't know if you can see it, but that rascal's bent. And I think I've had it, oh, well, two, three years. It's made in China. But what I do is when it gets too badly bent, I just take, lay it on the uh, workbench, thump it, and come back and go back to work with it. Now I got another one, a little bit bigger, but sometimes that comes in handy. I mean, you can see right there, you see how it's bent a little bit. And like I say, I just whack it with a hammer and bring it back to straight, but it's a soft metal, so it keeps bending. And I'm only using that it's not, and I don't draw back and, and uh, wail it. Tap, tap, but tap, tap made that one bend. All right, well, I'm going to, it's getting dark here. It's been hotter than all get out all day long. So I'm going to call it a day, end the video right here. And I hope everybody had a good week. Hope everybody has a good weekend. And uh, if you like these videos, like, share, subscribe. We put out a video uh, once a week, sometimes twice a week. And sometimes I'll drop a short in there. Just if I feel kind of, you know, doing something kind of goofy, I'll drop a short in there. So, again, everybody have a good weekend. Stay out of trouble. And we'll see you on the next go-around. Cowboys. Out. Bye now.